Alright, it's time to play some Day Before. Hey, wait, why... Why can't I buy it? Why, why is there no pricey thing? Wait, what happened? Let's check the reviews. Oh, the reviews might give us some clues. Oh my. Okay, let's search Steam discussions for clues. Oh dear. Well, okay, let's check the official Discord. Surely everything's sensible in there and we'll get some answers. Good gravy! Oh dear, he used the gamer word. The day before. What the hell happened? So, how did we get here then? The day before went from once being the most wish-listed game on Steam, to tanking the studio, apparently only four days after its rather dismal early access launch. Was it a series of unfortunate events? An outright scam? In this here video, we will go back to the start, to where it all began, and have a deep dive into the rise and fall of the day before. It's January 2021. The day before, seemingly pops out of the ether with its first of a couple of gameplay trailers. Much hyped by the likes of IGN and the other usual rags, it does look rather good. It looks good, right? Almost too good. In the business, we call this foreshadowing. Wink. For some of the gamers, myself included here by the way, these days we do tend to be a pretty sceptical bunch. Thanks to numerous past game experiences, so there's been some titles that have had some graphical downgrades, let's be fair. Either at launch or fairly close to it. The day before just seemed too good in this reveal. Even if we ignore the obviously staged and set up shenanigans in the video, this is supposed to be actual gameplay being revealed. So with suspicions set aside, what was shown was immediately promising to an awful lot of players looking for a title just like this. A daisy killer, if you will, set in a city environment, but using today's modern technology. I myself was hyped, but also just a little bit skeptical, like I've already said. Those of us that did have some suspicions though, again, still interested, did wonder what else has this company already produced? Is this their first game or have they done things before? Indeed, the creator Fantastic, or Fantastic as I do like to call them, did make some other games. The probably most well-known one being Prop Knight, which is a bit like a Gary's Mod prop hunt type of game that was really quite popular, very well received, up until a particular point where the game seemingly was just abandoned and nothing else was done. They also did another not so well-known game called Radiant One, Again, seemed to be received quite well, but then just updates stopped and people really just consider these games abandoned at this point. There's going to be a bit of a theme here. It's also worth noting that before they became known as Fantastic, they were also previously known as Eight Points, and they had a Kickstarter quite a few years ago now, a Kickstarter for a game called Wild Eight. And again, a game that was really well received, seemingly abandoned, and the rights went to the publisher instead, and a different company finished it off as far as I'm aware. And so, even at this pretty early point of their first reveal, there's already a couple of warning signs. It looks a bit too good to be true, and the company already has a history of abandoning quite small scale games, let alone something as massive as a huge MMO survival, crafting, shooting, looting game for many players. But who knows? Maybe they were going to be able to pull this off. Maybe they were going to create the de facto, the ultimate survival looter shooter. One month later, in February 2021, IGN once again has a trailer for us. Now, it's not super clear as to how IGN received this exclusivity as it were. 
I can't find anything to suggest that they were paid or promised anything special, and I'm certainly not going to accuse them of anything like that, but it is nonetheless a minor curiosity here. Who reached out to who, and what, if anything, was promised, we'll probably not ever know. The discussion portion at the start of this video trailer promises us great things. The lead people from Fantastic, Fantastic, <laughs> and publisher Mytona appear to talk the big talk and hype people up a little bit more. And the gameplay? Again, it looks pretty incredible. Very shooty shooty bang bang, and indeed shows some other further mechanics of the world of the day before. In all, you could argue that this does appear to show that the game is real, and it is being worked on. But, and it's a big but, it does go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, all these little slices, these little vertical slices of gameplay could all easily be controlled. And this could be before any of the rest of the game is even present. This could just be a small curated area, a demo of sorts allowing for way more visual splendour and performance, and again, it's a sceptic in me, but we weren't seeing anything that big in scope. It was always these little small areas. We haven't seen anything of this magnitude from this small team. Nobody has even mentioned how all this was being funded in the first place so far. Which again was another concern for some people. But, and this is a different but, Something was about to happen, something big, something massive that was going to prove all of us wrong. A tweet? Yeah, I bet you weren't expecting that. That was a big surprise and a big reveal. But no, I digress. A tweet was sent out about a live stream. A live stream that would be conducted on none other than IGN. On their YouTube. Now, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. To get your content shared on a platform such as IGN is a big deal. And so a date was set. March 31st. A little while to wait. But it's a big special event, it's to do with the day before. Most of us can't wait. It's happening you guys, it's showtime, let's go. In the business we call this foreshadowing. Yeah, it's not coming. A new tweet was sent. No explanation as to why, just another tweet. A new date, the day before is coming on IGN YouTube channel, April 6th. The MMO genre is about to change. Share. And what happened on that day? Well, we waited for a little while, the live time, and then we waited a little bit longer, and then we waited some more, and then it was revealed that there were some technical problems with the stream. Apparently they weren't capable of uploading a video file, so we ended up watching a lakeside campfire and some music for a while, and we had a little dance for nine and a half hours. So what happened? Nobody knows. But do you know what happened next? Can you guess? Yeah, there was another tweet. The day before event has been postponed. We'll have a new date soon. Oh, golly gosh gumdrops. I can't wait for that. For a lot of people, this occasion was one of the biggest red flags of all. How can we trust a company to provide a game of this magnitude if they can't even operate a stream? Now, bearing in mind, I'm assuming all this stuff would have been sent to IGN. It would have been a video file, an MP4, for someone to click play on, on a stream. I do this all the time. I'm very familiar with how easy it is. A child could do it. You could automate things like this to occur. So the community outrage was pretty inevitable. Everybody thought this was a big show and tell that was going to be happening, and it fell apart after further delays. And for nine hours, the level of incompetence there was pretty staggering. But there was still chance for redemption. Another tweet. We're grateful for your patience. It's been almost 24 months since our fantastic team began working on the day before. Allegedly. We've been working really hard. Allegedly. 
nights, days and weekends. And we look forward to showing you the longest gameplay footage. See you on April 9th on IGN, of course. And the hype was still there. About 5 million, just over 5 million people watched this 13 minute gameplay. And it seemed really good. Really, really good. We could see big areas of the game world. There was driving, there was shooting, there was looting, uh, there was more shooting. It was really not that accurate. Whoever was playing it really seemed to feel like they were playing with a controller. So hopefully that was going to be a good sign for console players until they announced that was basically going to be on hold indefinitely. So all the hardcore fans had something to rejoice with. This was going to prove the doubters wrong. The game definitely exists, it's real, it's there and can be played. Hopefully we're going to see some kind of alpha or beta at some point. No, some of us were still a little bit sceptical. At the end of this marvellous presentation, something else was revealed. Another game. Enter Prop Night, a game that we mentioned at the start of the video. Something else that this company was going to be responsible for. It would kind of look like, and I would suggest, that was very much the case. That the day before was literally being used as an advertisement for this other game. You've got all these eyeballs eagerly awaiting further and further more and more information about the day before. And then you say about another big announcement at the end of that big announcement. And it's another game entirely? Something incredibly different that apparently has also been worked on as a side project during the development of the day before? A lot of people that thought the game was probably fake, thought that this was basically a way to drum up hype and then promote something entirely different. And this wouldn't be the only time the company would do such a strange and unusual thing. They also used the day before for promoting some kind of brand new Zoom app, of all things. Again, it really did appear as though they were using all the hype around this game that may or may not exist as a way to bring all these eyeballs in to promote other random products that nobody was really interested in, but I'm sure generated a whole bunch of money for them, for them to then abandon. So at this stage, when nobody has bought the game, no one's done pre-orders, the company's presumably not making any money from the day before, a lot of people were saying, well, it can't possibly be a scam because they're, they're, not, they're not selling us anything. They're not, they're not, uh, there's no kind of con involved. And it's like, but there kind of is because we've not really seen anything of the actual game other than some trailers and yet we're being promoted some entirely different products. At this point in the story, this is where it could already be a scam. Showing you one thing, generating a big bunch of hype and attention and then selling you something else on the side. Hey, take a look at this, we're also making this. But those were actual real tangible products at that point. And so that was a little bit odd. But what happened next? Radio silence. Nothing. Nothing at all. Not really any tweets. No videos. Nothing. Until suddenly, in October, another little trailer. A quite upbeat one showing various bits of the game, different aspects, locations and guns and weapon modification and looting and shooting. Well, the, the hype's back on, boys. And there's a release date right at the end. Look at that. It's coming out in 2022? In June? That's really quite soon. Back then it was. Well, that's great news. Not too long to wait. Nothing to be worrying about, right? Everything's going to be fine. No worries. It's all going to be good. Oh no, everything would be very much not good. Spoiler alert! I know it's going to come as a complete shock and surprise, but there was another delay. It was getting to the point now where the day before was almost becoming a bit of its own meme, really. Inspired people were calling it things like the delay before, or the day after the delay, and stuff like that. You know, all, all good fun stuff, you know, a good bit of mockery is always, always a good time. 
Because apparently, they just wanted to make the game better, and they wanted to upgrade to Unreal Engine 5. Because of all the hype. And it was our fault. It was our fault for being so hyped. Okay. Bit of a strange excuse, but an excuse nonetheless. And a bit of an odd one. But what was even stranger was even further. Red flags starting to pop up everywhere. On the internet, Reddit, Twitter. People were finding a lot of really suspect things about the game. Now it's okay to take inspiration from other games. Nothing wrong with that. There's a difference between taking inspiration and then just straight up taking. Pretty much straight away from the get-go, people notice that their font and their font art style is somewhat similar, some would say identical, to the font and style of The Last of Us. But whatever, you know, could be just a bit lazy, I suppose. Maybe that was going to be a placeholder for a while. Lazy, but not necessarily a big red flag. What is a big red flag was just how often cases of this, like, pretty much plagiarism was happening. There were other pieces of artwork that just seemed to be straight up copies of other games. Now, it's clear the game itself has taken inspiration from something like The Division, but also apparently screenshots and artwork that The Division is famous for. Not only that, but some people, and of course it's the internet, so there's people out there that are like, I know this thing off by heart, and they're copying that, and it would be something as random as one of the cutscenes being literally shot-for-shot shot remakes of cutscenes from other popular video games. Again, nothing wrong with taking inspiration from something, but my god, it looks like they just needed something to make a cool cutscene. They're like, what's everybody else doing? Okay, just do that. Just copy that. That's perfect. Before offers a uniquely reimagined journey into post-apocalyptic MMO open world survival. Rockstar have tried to reimagine the open world game in a number of ways. The open world of the day before is beautiful and richly detailed. The game world is beautiful, massive, and diverse. The weapons, which can be modified, are made with maximum realism to ensure that combat remains deep and engaging at all times. Make combat deep and engaging at all times. Each weapon boasts unique characteristics as well as realistic reload and recoil mechanics. Each weapon has unique characteristics with realistic reload and recoil. Welcome to the next generation of post-apocalyptic MMO open world survival games like never before. Welcome to the next generation of open world adventure. Immerse yourself in the day before. Immerse yourself in Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> So we have this like strange grey area of, is it just absolute laziness? Was it just part of the rushing and trying to get something out there? Or was it straight up just trying to copy something else that's popular in the hopes of having the same popularity? Whatever the reason actually was, the only thing that it really served to do was make more people more dubious about the game's existence as an actual physical game. Because it just looked like Fake cinematics, the other way to describe it. It was so uninspired, so unoriginal, to straight up copy other video games' cutscenes, that it just made people think, well this can't be real, they're just going, what else is popular, put that in, okay, ship it, and then we'll promote these other products, and everyone gets hyped for the zombie game that just coincidentally has the exact same cutscenes from other video games. It was really, really strange. Anyway, where all this is leading now is straight into the realm of the Unreal Asset Store. Now, the Unreal Asset Store, for those of you that don't know, I'll give you the, the quick TLDR. It's a place on Unreal Engine where you can buy stuff that other people have made, whether that be animations, buildings, game items, animations for those game items. There could be something as simple as a shape. There could be something as simple as a cardboard box with a texture on it. No nothing else at all, no animations, no anything else. And then straight up to like fully working vehicles that are ready to go that you can plop into a game. All that kind of stuff. In an ideal world, what this allows is developers to focus on other areas of the game and then download stuff that's ready made, ready to go. They might be able to make a few adjustments here and there, maybe change the size, shape, colour, texture, all that kind of thing to make it a bit more unique, a bit more their own, rather than just buying it and plonking it in as it were. 
obviously worst case scenario is what's commonly now known as the asset flip where using free assets, cheap assets or sometimes even expensive assets people will just download the things they need for a game and then that's it. That's it, they just put it on the Steam store or wherever just to sell it and they've done virtually no work at all. That's the worst case scenario. There's nothing inherently wrong with using assets. It's how you use those assets. And of course, Fantastic kept saying how they'd made so much, they'd spent so much time working on stuff. Everything was handmade, curated, organic, hors d'oeuvre, something. <laughs> you can see where I'm going with this. They were saying, they were talking the big talk, but then people were like, well, that entire area of that city is just all pre-bought assets and they're working out which ones they were, how much they were, and like even linking to them on Twitter. And spoiler alert, since the game has come out, somebody literally just paste binned an entire section from the game that shows what the assets were. Because when you put them into a game, they're kind of baked in there, like a literal link. So if you're going through your code and like, where did that come from? You can go obviously straight back on the store to go get it or go look at it. And there's over 150 assets in that game. Everything from like whole sections of the city to vehicles, animations, um, best way of describing it, ways of how the game works. So like a quest system already, you know, already to go baked in, you drop it into your game, you make some changes. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm glossing over a little bit because I'm trying obviously to condense this video as much as possible because it's going to be quite big. So obviously not all of this is super easy, but there are some literal drag and drop features of some of these assets. So I dare say, and I would hazard a guess, that this game could have been made in as little as six months. Maybe even less time than that. It really depends on how many people were actually working on this. And I wouldn't trust the company to tell us how many people actually were. Also, speaking of people working on the game, one of the other huge red flags quite early on into the development cycle for this game and what they were talking about in interviews and tweeting and statements is a lot of the people that were working on this game were not even being paid. There was a big deal with them asking for volunteers and having like, what's the best way of describing it? They were very flexible with the word volunteer, so they had like these two sections. There was outright volunteers, and then there was like slightly paid volunteers. Apparently they were full-time, paid a salary, so it seems strange to keep calling them volunteers. I mean, you normally call them employees, let's let's be honest. <laughs> that's, that's what you... What, what? It doesn't make any sense, but it's just one of the things about this game and its history that makes absolutely no sense. So there's apparently some people working on it for completely free and they weren't even getting paid like part-time or maybe they were but they were just getting other benefits like free codes to play the game, maybe some of the other games, certificates, I kid you not. Imagine working on a game for free and getting a certificate. Especially given what's happened to this game, would you want a certificate for this? I mean maybe it'll become one of those like <laughs> one of those like random things to own a piece of history like what a massive pile of poo this was. I worked on it and I got a participation certificate. At this point, all said and done, there was no new information for quite a bit of time. Only stuff that people were finding out about the trailers digging around in there. So most of it not really good news for them. And then we didn't really hear anything else until January 2023. And boy was January 2023 gonna be a doozy. It's now January 2023. Nothing too much is going on for the day before. Nvidia has a pretty pointless RTX trailer for the day before, showing RTX on and off as they often like to do. Completely pointless, but it looks nice, I guess. So there was no real gameplay updates, no, no new footage there. Still radio silence, just people questioning whether the game is even real, still. And then a funny thing happened. The day before, mysteriously, just straight up vanishes from Steam. It's not there anymore. 
it's gone off people's wish lists. It was at the top of the wish list on Steam for a long time. Of course, straight away the internet went into conspiracy overdrive. Did Steam suddenly decide that it was definitely a fake game and removed it? Did somebody supply some information to prove that it was fake to Steam and Steam made a move? This seemed unlikely, because Steam doesn't really like to make any kind of moves, ever, unless something is pretty serious. Some other funny things happened as well. People from Fantastic reached out to the community that had been made on Reddit for the day before, basically just trying to take over control. And that didn't go down very well, because it was meant to just be a community one that wasn't really attached to the game. Even some of the moderators for the day before Discord start to doubt if the game is even real at this point. Fantastic tried to gloss over the fact that it had been disappeared from Steam by saying it was Steam's fault. It's a bug. Happens with lots of games. Right? Not really. And then the truth of the matter came out. For some reason, Fantastic didn't decide to trademark or copyright the name the day before. So it was actually well, pretty much a lawsuit really that was saying that, that I own that name. So there's a trademark lawsuit. Now, maybe it's just me, but if I was making a product or making a game, I would sure as hell make sure that I actually give it A, a good name and B, can actually get the legal right to that name so someone else can't use it yet. And then Fininatastic decide to share the details that they were always going to have this delay. So they just can't stop lying. They lie and say it's Steam's fault. Then it turns out it's not Steam's fault. It's a lawsuit, essentially, for, for copyright for a, a trademark dispute. And now they're saying they're going to delay anyway? Just really bizarre stuff. Sometime in June, the day before, shares a bit more information about customizable houses, you know, really showing off the MMO part of the game that, spoiler alert, didn't really exist. There was big talk about how players would be able to have like jobs, houses, even saunas and stuff, and that like the game economy would be like by the players, for the players as it were. Come November time, allegedly the day before gets back its name, so yay, I guess. And thusly, December 2023, we arrive to launch day. Would you like to take a guess as to how it went? Your belongings will be safe and sound. Great! For you, there will always be a place in the store.
What if this game's actually kind of good, guys? I swear it might be kind of good somehow. I don't know how, but I swear it might be. But I, I might be tro- Oh no. Oh, fuck! Okay, okay, go, 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 go Westberg! Westberg! It's high! It's high, it's high! Go Westberg! It's the last one, Westberg! Yes, launch day went absolutely swimmingly, not not a single hitch. Those of us that were lucky, or rather, maybe unlucky, to actually get into the game and not spend two or three hours just trying to get into a server, because they were all full, and even if they weren't full, the amount of times people were having disconnections before they could even get into the game for two to three hours, just conveniently bypassing that two hour refund limit on Steam, Surely just a coincidence, but the actual tutorial, if you were to do like everything by the book, would also take you maybe an hour or two if you were particularly slow about it or listen to all the conversations. Again, a lot of people think that was kind of a little bit deliberate. The day one bugs were numerous and many. A lot of people were wondering how they were dying in full cover and stuff, not realizing that to the other person, you were a giant attack on titan creature roaming the city with a hitbox the size of a small continent. For some people, myself included, there was a, a clear indication really that literally no playtesting had been done for this game at any point. No wonder it was launching straight into early access because they'd thrown a bunch of things together hoping something would stick and this is what we got. Literally, people were duplicating items and money by going to split an item like a, like a pile of money, you'd split a pile of money, it wouldn't deduct anything, so you would just, just drag and duplicate, drag and duplicate. The most basic of things had clearly not been tested at any point in the game's lifespan. So needless to say, not a lot of people actually put that many hours into the game. Some people refunded almost straight away, some people of course streamers and stuff just tried to, to milk it for the memes. It was that bad, it was such a disappointment. There looked to be, like, no hope for this game at all. And the most major thing, it isn't really an MMO. It was highly marketed and hyped up as being a massively multiplayer online game. And it's not. It's a basic bones extraction shooter. It's like Tarkov, but in third person. But not even in a good way. It's so basic. It's so bare bones. It's a wonder the thing even worked at this extent at any point. A day later, a big hot fix came out. Quite a good sign, really. All things considered, quite a good sign. Obviously, hindsight's 2020, but that did look like a good sign at the time. A whole bunch of bug fixes and stuff. Quite a nice day one drop. Would have been nice if the game was a bit more ready. Like, you do expect some bugs day one. It's, it's just a thing. You expect day bugs, day one bugs, especially in early access. It's kind of what it's for. It's for bug hunting, depending on whereabouts in early access it is. Is it alpha? Is it beta? So on and so forth. But generally speaking, in early access, you expect the bare minimum to be working so you can actually play test the game. It's not for literally doing the job of a developer finding out what happens when you first ever play the game. So it was safe to say, the launch was a huge disaster. Everything that could have gone wrong, did. We had two patches to fix things over the period of two days after launch, so that's three days. What happened on day four? Holy balls, guys, they're taking the money and running. Only four days after launch, out of absolutely nowhere, Fantastic, Fantastic, just decides to fuck off. <laughs> if we didn't laugh, we would cry, some of us that spent money on this thing. Like many a gaming company before them, 
they issued the solemn JPEG. Today we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. Unfortunately, the day before has failed financially and we lack the funds to continue. All income received is being used to pay off debts to our partners. Whatever the hell that means. We invested all our efforts, resources and man hours into the development of the day before, which was our first huge game. We really wanted to release new patches to reveal the full potential of the game. Maybe do that before you launch it? But unfortunately, we don't have the funding to continue the work. It's important to note that we didn't take any money from the public during the development of the day before. There were no pre-orders or crowdfunding campaigns. This doesn't make it any better. We worked tirelessly for five years. Doubt. Pouring our blood. Doubt. Sweat. Doubt. And tears. Maybe. Into the game. At the moment, the future, the day before, and prop night is unknown. But the servers will remain operational. They don't go into how long for. We apologise if we didn't meet your expectations. We did everything within our power, but unfortunately, we miscalculated our capabilities. Creating games is an incredibly difficult, incredibly challenging endeavour. Yeah, it must be really hard to whip out your debit card and go onto the Unreal Asset Store, buy all the things you need, slap it all together and hope for the best. Very difficult, and it takes five years. We're grateful to everyone who supported us during these difficult years. It's been a fantastic journey over the past eight years. Has it though? Has it though? Has it really? So yes, just four days after release of the game, apparently that was just enough to tank the entire company. Suddenly they began purging videos from their YouTube channel, especially removing anything that mentioned that the game was some kind of MMO. Especially any videos that talked about features that didn't exist in the game, like the executions. Like, pretty much all of the things they showed. Things were yeeted from their official website, and then the website itself was yeeted. The CEO's Twitter, yeeted. The CEO's LinkedIn profile, yeeted. So many things were suddenly being scrubbed from existence. Again, th this is probably the biggest red flag we were going to get. There was plenty of red flags throughout the whole saga. But this was the big one. One red flag to rule them all, if you will. At this point, it was definitely safe to say there'd been some kind of scam. They were going to try and take the money and run. Now, four criminals, allegedly, better be careful. Four a bunch of criminals, allegedly. They strike me more as the wet bandit kind of criminals. Not very smart. They're not the Ocean Eleven of criminals. Allegedly criminals. <laughs> because Steam, as far as I understand, holds the money for all game sales for about 30 days. So they're not going to get any of the money that people spent on this piece of shit. Everybody should get a full absolute refund regardless of playtime. And apparently the, the owner... Apparently, the main publisher, Mytona, is also saying that. They themselves don't really get off scot-free in this. They have their own suspicious activity surrounding all this. Not going to make any allegations here, of course. Played on the safe side. There's enough to make you a little bit suspicious of them, too. But apparently, everybody that wants a refund is going to get one. So the question is, what was the point of this scam? Because that's how it looks now. But there was no pre-orders... There was no crowdfunding, so what exactly was done? Well, some people have suggested that there was probably some kind of government investment involved, of course, along with the investment from Mytona. So I do think we'll be waiting a little while longer to find out the nitty gritty details of who knew what, when, why, how. There's probably going to be NDAs involved, so there could be a bit of time before anyone feels comfortable saying anything very specific. But for the moment, it looks like the company's gone under. They're trying to take whatever money they've got and run. Whether it was all down to, like, not really trying to make a game, but getting caught up in the lie, so they had to carry on and do the bare minimum. Maybe they thought they were going to scam customers as well, but chicken out at the last minute. Who knows? But for me personally, this definitely looks like a scam now. They'll have made the bare minimum bit of money that they, they could, and then they've done a runner. But this really has been such a crazy story to follow for the last couple of years. Just an absolutely outrageous fall from grace to go from being one of the most anticipated, wishlisted game on Steam ever to being outed as a scam. 
literally at the very last minute. And so, here at the end, guys, please do make sure to like and subscribe and share the video. But I do also want to just quickly say a few extra words right at the end here. Please stick around because if you value my opinion or you want to know it, it's coming right up. The thing that bothers me the most about all of this is there's been people online saying that people have deserved to be scammed because it was so obvious. But guys, people are desperate for a really good video game. All the time, people are really desperate for like the next big thing, especially in the survival genre like this game was supposed to be originally. Almost everybody in this sort of genre wants something really good, something that's going to be better than everything that came before it. So hope is a very, very powerful feeling. Plus there would have been those people that just had the money to burn and the curiosity to satisfy that. So no, I don't think anyone really deserves to be scammed. And some of the people it's going to suck for for the most, and I've already seen it happen in some YouTube comments, some Steam comments, is that everyone's looking at brand new games now with absolute suspicion. And it's really sad, people going, oh, this is going to be the next day before. Oh, this is probably a scam as well. Is this game even real? Like, guys, be sceptical, but don't be a dick. There are genuine developers out there, your one-man teams, even big companies, that genuinely want to bring you a game to enjoy and play. But anyway, guys, if you've made it right to the end of the video, thank you very much for watching. This is the first time I've done a sort of a big deep dive video like this. It was a lot of effort to put together, I can tell you that, while also working. So I appreciate you all, have a very good day, and I'll catch you in the next one.